the quantity is between 5,000 and 11,111, you should choose location C. If your quantity is 5,000 or lower, you should choose location B. If your quantity is 11,111 or higher, you should choose location C. Yes, hello everyone! So welcome to our next topic on our study of operations management. And this topic is actually one of the most crucial part in establishing a physical facilities. You know, this is one of the crucial part on decision making, specifically on OM side of business, which is the location strategies. Okay, so for this discussion, we will going to have a deep knowledge and understanding regarding on how we should locate our facilities. Okay, so let's start our discussion regarding location strategies. So location options actually managers or business owners of existing companies and businesses generally consider four options in location planning. No, and what are those options? First, uh, expand an existing facility. Second, add new locations while retaining the existing ones. Third is to shut down the existing ones at one location and one and move it to another location. And lastly, do nothing. Okay, so just uh, just do nothing status quo. Ayun yung sabi nila. Okay, so that is the four location options of managers usually in location planning but we actually have different evaluating location alternatives on, on this these are the recommended uh, solutions or recommended mathematical practice in evaluating our location alternatives first is that we have the locational cost profit volume analysis cpv or sometimes in accounting world this is called cvp analysis the cost volume profit analysis. The second one is the factor rating. Well, the last one is the center of gravity approach. Now, what is the difference of these three? Let's start discussing. Okay, so for the first one, locational cost profit volume analysis, this is basically a technique for evaluating location choices in economic terms. Okay, so the assumptions, if you're going to use this, is that first assumption, fixed costs are constant for the range of probable output. Second assumption, variance costs are linear for the range of probable output. Third assumption is that the required level of output can be closely estimated. And the last one is only one product is involved in the study of CVP analysis. Now for the formula of the total cost, that is basically FC plus VC times the quantity. So FC stands for the fixed cost while VC guys stands for the variable cost. Now, Let's have an example problem here for you to be able to appreciate more the first strategy or the first, uh, what we call this, the first evaluating, uh, first recommended evaluation on how, how we should evaluate the location alternatives. Fixed cost and variable cost for four financial plans location are shown below. Compute for the total cost using 10,000 quantity and decide what is the best location. To use. So we have here four locations, location A to D, and the fixed cost per year to $50,000, $100,000, $150,000, and $200,000. Variable cost per unit is that $11, $30, $20, and $35. So we should find actually what should be our, our decision, what should be the location that we should choose you know, based on these numbers, based on this figure. So, let's start the solution. Actually, we should compute for the total cost. Okay? And again, based on the formula given on the previous slide, for the total cost that is fixed cost plus, oops, plus our variable cost multiplied to our quantity. So, meaning to say, we should solve for the fixed cost for the location A, location B, fixed cost, a uh, total cost Location C, total cost, and the location D, total cost. Okay, so for location A, we have a fixed cost of 250000 Okay, so let's write it here. 
$250,000. Actually, we can write all the fixed costs na eh. So, 100, 150, and 200. So, 100, 150, and 200,000 dollars and we can now add the product of our variable cost together with the quantity okay for the variable cost we have the variable cost for four locations 11 30 20 and 35 so 11 30 20 and the last one is 35 Okay, then multiply to our quantities, which are quantities natin based on the problem, it is 10,000. Okay, so 10,000 quantity, this is for all of these four locations na. Okay po. So assuming that our uh, product quantity for us to be to be produced in, in any location is 10,000. Okay, so 10,000. Multiply natin sa 10,000 itong lahat na ito. 10,000. Then let's solve for their total cost. 10,000. Okay, so let's now solve 250 plus 11 times 10,000. Let's have it here. 250 times 250,000 plus 11. Okay. We have 360,000 total cost for the location. 360,000. Next, let's make this 100,000 okay, times 30. So we have 400,000 total cost for location B. Okay, then next, let's make this 150 times 20 okay so we have a total of 350,000 total cost for the location C okay and lastly we have here 200 200,000 plus 35 times 10,000 we have a total of 550,000 so as you can see guys, if we have a 10,000 units, this is based on 10,000 units, we should choose actually the lowest total cost. And that is, in our case, that is location C. Okay, this is it. $350,000. Now, we can actually graph this. As you can see, we have, we have a graph. I hope you know how to graph uh this numbers no isisimulan nyo lang naman siya sa fixed cost just like this one the fixed cost for a is 250 dito po siya nag start around this fixed cost for b is 100 that's why nag start siya around dito b is color blue ito po okay fixed cost for c is 150 that's why the red line starts here okay and the fixed cost for for letter d is 200,000 that's why the green line starts here then, uh, you're going to, to graph you know, what will be the total annual cost. Ito na po yun. So, 250 and the 360. Okay, so 360 na ito. Sa, sa, sa 10,000. Kaya itong A, you know, we have here 10,000. Tapos, ito around 360. This 20. Okay, then, i-join nyo lang linear. I hope uh, that is very clear to you. That is basic of mathematics and how we graph this equations no and as you can see guys this graph only shows that if our quantity is 10,000 okay based on our problem 10,000 as you can see the innermost line is the red one this one okay which is letter C that's why I said that if your quantity is equivalent to 10,000 you should choose location C but as you can see here if this intersection, pababa, around 4, 4 point something or 5,000 something lower, you should choose the blue line or the location that is the most beneficial for you. And if 
I think this is around 11,000 or more, no near 12,000. If that is the case, if that is your quantity, you should now choose the location A, okay, the black line here, for you to be to be more beneficial in decision na gagawin mo. Okay, and as you can see, location D is never superior. Meaning, any quantity you have in mind, never mo dapat pili and si location D. Okay, dahil it will just lead you to a greater cost compared to the three locations. Okay, the exact ranges can be determined by finding the output level at, at which lines B and C and line C and A crosses. Ito po yan. Ano yung sinasabi niyan? No? We have actually an estimation lang kanina while I am explaining the lines, the interpretation of the graph. I, I just have some assumptions. But we can actually compute for the exact value of this point and also the exact value of this point by just having the equations of the lines B and A, that is the blue, and uh, sorry, lines B and C, the blue and red, test one, and the lines C and A, the red and black, which is this one. So let's compute for the exact value of this. Okay, so let me change my pen color first into white. So let's have the computation of break even output level. So how, how we should compute those levels? First, let's start with the B and C, with the intersection of B and C, which is this point. Okay, as you can see guys, we have this equation and we're finding the value of the quantity. Okay, meaning to say we will we will use this equation, 100,000 plus 30, not 10,000, but rather we will go into to change this into Q. Okay, so 100,000 plus 30 Q, that will be the equation for letter T. So 100,000 plus 30 Q equals the equation for letter C. We will go into equate them. Okay, for letter C, 150,000 plus 20 Q. Okay, so 150,000 plus 20 Q. Okay, so basic mathematics, we can have here 100,000 minus 150. Okay, equals 20 Q minus 30 Q. So we have here negative 50,000 equals negative 10 Q. Divide both sides into negative 10 for us to be able to find the value of the Q. And we can have here 50,000 divided by 10. That will be 5,000. And that is the value of our Q or the quantity. 5,000. Meaning to say, guys, this point is equivalent to 5,000. Exactly 5,000. So let's write it here. Okay, exactly this point is 5,000. Okay, so next is the point of intersection between C and A, between the red line and the black line. So let's continue our computation here. C and A. So this is the equation for letter C, right? So let's just copy it. 150,000 plus 20. U equals the equation for letter A. We have here 250,000 plus 11 Q. Okay, so 250,000 plus 11 Q. So we have here 150,000 minus 250,000 equals 11 Q minus 20 Q. So we have here negative 100,000 equals 11 minus 20 that is basically negative 9 okay so negative 9 q and divide both sides into negative 9 we will be having negative 100,000 divided by negative 9 this is around 11,111 okay. units guys yeah since we are talking about quantity here we can have the units okay 11,111 units per year and this is actually 5,000 units per year. Meaning to say, the point of intersection between point between the line C and the line A is 11,000, this one, let's just write it here, 11,111. Meaning to say, if your quantity is between 5,000 
and 11,111, you should choose location C. If your quantity is 5,000 or lower, you should choose location B. If your quantity is 11,111 or higher, you should choose location A. So that's how we interpret the uh, CVP analysis, okay? Applied in location strategy. Okay, so meaning again, a decision natin sa problem, 10,000 units tayo, di ba? So we should choose the location A. So that is the first uh, evaluating decisions or evaluating location alternatives. That is the first technique. Okay, for the second one, we have the factor rating. Okay, so for the factor rating, let's continue this in our next discussion. Uh, I'm looking forward for the mastery of the subject and of course on the topics that we have on operations management. Hope you guys learned something from this discussion. Thank you and keep safe always. See you on our next discussion regarding factor rating. <music>